they're ready. No. Okay. okay. Yeah. We just reconvened from closed session. And I'd ask Liz if you could read those items and any report from the attorney, please. Yes, we had five items in closed session. The first one, conference with labor negotiator, um, Galt Police Officers Association, and Galt Public Service Unit. The number two, conference with real property negotiator, uh, city negotiator Jason Behrman, um, and Beekman. Number three, conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation, one case. Number four, conference with legal counsel, existing litigation, Chris Smith at all versus City of Galt. And number five, public employee performance evaluation, city manager. Okay, and we did not complete those, but any report from Steve, our attorney? Um, yes, Mr. Mayor. On item one, conference with labor negotiator, the council will uh, reconvene on that item after uh, the regular meeting. Com item number two, conference with real property negotiator. Uh, the City Council received a report and provided directions to its negotiators. There's no reportable action under item number two, conference or item three, conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation. There's no reportable action. Uh, conference with legal counsel, existing litigation, Smith versus City of Galt. City Council received a report on this item and there's no reportable action. And then on the last item, public employee performance evaluation, City Council will convene on that item after the regular meeting. Thank you. We will now open the regular City Council meeting at 7.02. Roll call, please. Council Member Payne. Here. Claire. Here. Payne. Here. Meredith. Here. Shelton. Here. I'd like all of you to please rise for a moment of silence, silent prayer. Remain standing for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Video statement, please. This meeting of the Galt City Council is being videotaped in its entirety and will be cable cast without interruption on Metro Cable 14, the Government Affairs Channel, on the Comcast and SureWest cable system. Tonight's meeting can be seen on Channel 14 and will also be webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv this Friday and Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. Tonight's meeting can also be seen via live video streaming on the city's website at www.ci.galt.ca.us. A VHS copy is also available for checkout from any library branch. Members of the audience wishing to address council should fill out a speaker identification form and give it to the clerk. Please speak into the microphone when addressing council and state your name for the record. Thank you. At this time, are there any uh, agenda? Well, well, anyway, let me start over. We. Uh, have any agenda approval, additions, and or deletions for any item to be moved? If there are none, will we have any presentations? None. We'll go to public comment. Under Government Code Section 54954.3, members of the audience may address the council on any item of interest to the public or on any agenda item before or during consideration of the item. Please fill out a speaker sheet located on the table inside the entrances to the council chambers and forward the completed speaker sheet to the city clerk prior to addressing the council. We request that you live. We request that you state whether you live within the Galt City limits or the county area. A maximum of five minutes is allowed for each speaker. Jean Davenport. Hi, my name is Gene Davenport. I live in the city of Galt. I'm here tonight to discuss um, at the last council meeting this, this, this council's two to two vote on a local hiring ordinance. Uh, I'm disappointed that Daryl didn't call in to vote or 
to speak on this. Uh, I mean, he's missed meetings in the past. He's always called in to put his sway in. I find it disheartening that you didn't even call. If you'd like to know, my wife and I were in Europe, a trip that was planned 13 months ago, and there was no way to either I call in or be here. I don't blame you. Um, it's still part of what I want to say, though. So That's why, it just so you understand, there was something we had planned 13 months ago. I hope you enjoyed it. Having no way to know when this item was I hope you enjoyed it. We had a great time. I hope at some later time that this comes back before the council and it's reconsidered. Because I think it's, it, 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 it's, it's short-sighted to, to make the comments, some of the comments that I heard and when I went home and watched the replay. Um, to, to, to think that a, a business group representative could come in and tell you it would, rise, it would raise costs and it wouldn't be good for the uh, contractors. We're missing a point here. It's the citizens of Galt that are unemployed. I don't care about the contractors. I'm not here for them. They want to come build in this city, let them come. But we need to do things for the people of this city. You want to talk about growth and grow, well, then grow with common sense. Don't be like Lodi double bill your citizens because when we give things away to business, this is what happens. Eventually it comes back to bite you. I don't care about any any group within the building trades that say that we that you don't need this. For anybody to say that is irresponsible. Because they don't know what kind of situation the city's in. We all do. They don't. Evidently some people on the city council talk to people outside of the city that said it wasn't feasible. I work in the city of Stockton. I work for a union. I am a longshoreman by trade. And I deal with contractors a lot in the premises of the port district and what they have to do. It doesn't cost them any more. We had two companies come in, this, in the port of Stockton in the last five years and built two brand new buildings. One of the facilities had absolutely zero local hire. When I say local, I mean statewide statewide. Every single nickel that that developer came in and, and put into this project went back to Texas and Tennessee. Not one person from California was hired. The second individual that built the cold storage facility hired a local contractor that, that, that was specific to, to the job. The rest of the hires came from a local day labor hall. That was as close as they came to, to local hire. All these developers and all these contractors that come in have a core group. You can't take that away from them. I wouldn't think of taking that away from them. Spe specifically, a Walmart building. A Walmart, almost every Walmart is built by Operating Engineers Local 3. All the other contractors are separate. You got your, um, your, your plumbers and pipe fitters, some are unions, some aren't. You got your electricians, some are unions, some aren't. Some come from out of state, some don't. But the core of this is if we have tradespeople that live within the city, union or not, we should have a base for them to get local hiring if there's something comes into this city to build. It's not going to cost the contractors another nickel, and for her to say that is a bald-faced lie. And for anybody to buy into it, it's short-sighted. It's not going to cost another nickel. You establish a program. It's going to take some time to, to build one, but you establish it, and people locally can sign in and be a part of it. It has nothing to do with union or otherwise. It has to do with hiring local. And it's just short-sighted to throw this out, especially in this economy. And it's sad to see that happen. I'm, I'm mad enough now that I'm trying to get with the, the Sacramento Labor Council and some of the building trades groups <laughs> to start a petition in the city to get it on the November ballot. Because it's just it's wrong for us not to consider what we're going through. We have people losing their, their, their home. In the city clerk's office or in the, uh, in the city manager's office, they had to put partition uh, separators because people are getting their, their power and utilities turned off, and they're reacting. And I know one of the things Ted said, we were going to work with people. Let's start working with the citizens. Let's start thinking about their future, our future. Let's keep the money local. When Walmart is built, because they're getting built, there's no doubt in my mind they're getting built, but they're going to hire locally to a point. But what kind of jobs are, are you know, we have people that can go to work on this, on this facility that are trained in what they do. We can help them stay here. And we're not doing that by saying we don't need it. It's just wrong, it's short-sighted, and I hope that this gets reconsidered because I am definitely going to try and get a campaign going to get this on a November ballot. It's wrong. We need to take the time to try and help each other. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
John Slaughterbeck. John, excuse me. John Slaughterback, I live in the city of Galt. Um, <clears throat> Boys and Girls Club, $400,000 fiasco, plus legal fees, which could add another 20000 I don't know. I submitted a records request for information that I thought might help explain where the money went, and I received a reply, no information available that pertained to my request. For the city to have a lawsuit against the club and not have any answers, I thought inconceivable. I had planned to pursue my request, but the next day the Lord I Knew Sentinel came out with a story on the Boys and Girls Club, on the Boys and Girls club with most of the information I had requested. Uh, from the city. I don't understand how Maggie Kramer could get that information and I couldn't. My concern, who benefited financially from transactions made under the auspices of the Boys and Girls Club? What kind of reasoning did the club see when it purchased, used when it purchased the property at 411 Fifth Street for $435,000? I don't believe the property was ever listed as being for sale. This property wasn't worth $435,000. The city's loan to the Boys and Girls Club appears to have been used to pay off the loan on this parcel. The club then sold the JC's property and building for $32,500. The club knew when they sold the JC's property they were going in default. Defunct. Uh, the sale of the property had the overtones of a secret backroom hush-hush deal. I don't believe this property was ever listed for sale, which and which would have brought more than $32,000 if it had been listed. If this wasn't a conspiracy to, to plunder the assets of the Boards and Girls Club before going defunct, then then it was some of the worst leadership skills I think I've ever seen from supposedly leaders of the community. When this group came to council seeking a loan, council member Tim Raboy said the city has already given close to a million dollars to the Boys and Girls Club and they haven't shown any management responsibility yet. Tim Raboy said, I think a loan to, the, uh, to this club would be a mistake. Not one council member Tom Molson, Daryl Clare, Randy Shelton, or Barbara Payne acknowledged anything Tim Raboy said. Councilmember Donald Haynes and Andrew Meredith voted not to accept this settlement agreement, which is understandable. If a person was not involved in making this problem, they wouldn't want their names associated with its failure. Article in the note I, News Sentinel, Councilwoman Barbara Payne believes the intention of council were always were always to provide with, for the youth of the community. The incident did teach an important lesson in how the city, sh city needs to make business decisions, Payne said. She believes the city should have done more research into the financial statements of the nonprofits. Excuses don't make a good leader. To accept excuses is just, just breeds more mistakes and more excuses. Council should have paid more attention when Timber Boy said a loan to the Boys and Girls Club would be a mistake. Council ignored that warning. I have some, this information, most of it came out of here, out of the Lodi News Center. Uh, I have time, I want to pass out some things that I, uh, I'm concerned. We talk about putting employees on, uh, hiring uh, people in golf to, to help out people go to work. I'm concerned on, does council know anything about what, where we're at with the upgrade to the wastewater recruitment plant, the water meter installation program? How come we don't notify, give some information to the citizens of golf 
uh, we don't know anything about what's going on after we cancel this uh, oversight committee. I'm going to pass this out. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, John. Next speaker, please. Bob Baldwin. Good evening, Council. Al Baldwin. I'm a concerned citizen all year, and I will be next year. And I'll tell you, the city has uh, gotten a lot more character than it had before. We Character Coalition has given uh, quite a few awards for integrity and honesty. And uh, it's good to hear that Galt's growing in that respect, and all the schools are doing it also. So I'm saying that uh, I think Galt is getting better, contrary to what you've heard tonight. It is going to get better. Uh, I'm sure the wastewater treatment plant's going to get better. I'm, I'm sure there's going to be more positive things happening next year. I think it's going to be great. I wanted to come tonight to also uh, thank uh, our city manager, Jason Berman and Randy Shelton, because at the... Galt Historical Society last night. Uh, they helped us uh, bring in the uh, officers. I happen to be one of them, and swore us in, and it was a great, wonderful time. And uh, they were really good. They they talked a little. They said a lot, and you know, it just it was it was a very very nice Christmas type uh, atmosphere, and it was a good dinner. I wish more of you could have come, but I know things happen. But it was great. I enjoyed it. Uh, Jason won some cookies. And I don't know if Randy won anything, but, uh, you know, <laughs> but uh, it, it worked out very, very good. And uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. I want to uh, say that uh, next year is going to be a real humdinger of a year. It's going to be a great year. I think the council has been doing uh, the best they can with what they've got. I think uh, next year you're going to have all kinds of opportunities and you're going to see all kinds of things happening and I look forward to seeing it too. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a very safe one. And I think it, it's going to be a very positive year next year. I think the economy may be starting to turn around. So with your guidance and leadership, I'm sure it will, contrary to what you've heard. It's going to be better. Thank you. Thanks, Al. Thanks, Al. Okay. We'll move into information consent agenda item. What we have, what, five? We have five if, items. If you could read those, please. Uh, number one, approval of the minutes of the special and regular council meetings of December 1st, 2009. Number two, approval of the City of Galt warrant. Number three, award of bid for the Central Galt Interchange Tree Removal Project. Number four, annual activity report for fiscal year 2008-2009 for the Redevelopment Agency of the City of Galt. And number five, the 2008-2009 Annual Report of Financial Transactions of Community Redevelopment Agencies. Okay. It appears as though there's no comments. No item was pulled. I'll look for a motion. Move to approve. I'll second. Motion's been made. Move to approve. No other comments or discussion. Let's call for the vote. Aye. 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 Thank you. And next item is scheduled matters. Okay, number one, continuation of public hearing. Commenced December 1st, 2009 to consider adoption of resolution of necessity determining that the public interest and necessity require the acquisition of certain property and property interests in and to a portion of the Beekman property located north of Bothell Road, east of State Route 99 for the Central Belt Interchange and State Route 99 Improvement Project. Staff report. Good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. This is a continuation of the public hearing from the December 1st meeting. Uh, I'm going to remind Council of the considerations and the findings. I'm going to skip the PowerPoint presentation and the history of the project. You've heard that enough. I think you all know what's uh, in entailed. Uh, we're going to ask Council tonight to consider all the evidence presented of whether the public interest and necessity require the project. I'm going to ask you to consider the evidence presented on whether the project is planned or located in a manner 
that would be the most compatible with the greatest public good and the least private injury. I ask that you consider all evidence presented on whether the subject project is necessary or subject property is necessary for the project. I'm going to ask that you make required findings for adoption as presented in your agenda report. And if based upon the evidence presented, council finds and determines that each of the four mentioned is true, staff recommends that the council adopt the proposed resolution of necessity. The property before you is a 3.88 acre parcel owned by Ty and Monica Beekman. We're talking about uh, three different takes on the property. The first is a partial take for fee, ac fee acquisition of about 4,500 square meters, a public utility easement acquisition of about 600, excuse me, 761 meters, and a public drainage easement of 989 square meters. Uh, we did make an offer, the first offer to purchase the property back in September uh, 8th of this year. Uh, we have been in discussions with the Beekman's negotiations and out, offers and counter offers since then. So far, we have not come to any negotiated settlement. Uh, at this point, adoption of, of the resolution of necessity is, is needed in order to keep the project moving along the uh, required schedule. The staff does still intend to uh, negotiate with the Beekman's. Um, I'm going to skip to the, the six findings that we're asking council to make. That will conclude my presentation. The first one is that the public interest and necessity require the project. The, the second one is that the proposed project is planned or located in the manner that is, will be the most compatible with the greatest public good and the least private injury. We're going to ask that the third one is that the property interest described in the resolution of necessity are necessary for the project. The offer required by the government code section 7267.2 has been made to the owner of record. Uh, fifth one is the subject property interest are being acquired for a compatible use such that the city's use of the subject property will not interfere with or impair the continued use of the property for the public use that exists or may reasonably be expected to use in the future. And lastly, that the use for which the subject property is sought to be taken is more necessary public use than the use for which the property is currently appropriated. Again, pursuant to California Code of Civil Procedure section 1240.61. Uh, that concludes my presentation. I ask now that the uh, council open the public hearing, or resume the public hearing and take public testimony. Okay. We'll open the public hearing. Okay, Ty Beekman. Good evening, Mayor, Council, City Staff. Ty Beekman, I live just outside the city limits. I want to thank you for postponing uh, last meeting's vote on the resolution of necessity uh, so that we could have a more focused opportunity to directly communicate with Mr. Halliday and Ms. Gorham, voicing our concerns and our issues related to this project. We want to state that while Mr. Meredith did strongly direct staff to get with the Beekmans and resolve this, um, we've only had the opportunity for one sit-down meeting. And it was basically an attempt for Ms. Gorham to understand both sides of the issues involved in this plan as it relates specifically to our property. While we um, com commend Ms. Gorham for asking insightful questions and summarizing her understanding of both the city's concerns and ours, we at this point have not received a reply to our counteroffer dated November 30th, as I'm sure you're well aware. We think it's important for you to hear from an affected party how frustrating this process can be. One side consists of a single party, married, <clears throat> happily, while the other side consists of numerous players, all of whom must clearly communicate with one another. We found that in many instances, in our case, it can be likened to a child's version of the phone tree game gone bad, where the message at the beginning is substantially altered by the time it gets to the last person. We believe that uh, we have spoken clearly and truthfully throughout this process, yet some may believe otherwise. Um, look to the telephone tree first. Uh, before assuming the worst about us, please. While we appreciate Council's direction for a meeting with us, we firmly believe that this action should have taken place months before the resolution of necessity was even being discussed. We understand the urgency of the current timeline and genuinely desire not to delay this project. We understand its need. Thus, we are not opposing tonight's passage or voting on the resolution of necessity. Please believe us when we tell you that we are also anxious to get this portion of the process behind us. We still have many more years of construction and impacted living ahead of us. 
we ask you, Council, to keep our plight on your front burner and to exercise your authority to encourage a negotiated settlement of this matter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ty. Thanks, Monica. Any other speakers? Additional speakers here. I'll ask that if are there any other members of the public that wish to speak before I call for a motion? If none, any other comments by council first? No? I would just say that Ty and Monica first they still hold the record for attending the meetings. Um, and it, it sounds like, and I was hoping you were clear, and it sounds like you're clear that what's occurring tonight and the valuation of your property are two very separate things. And so I'm glad that's clear because that is something very important. We don't want any confusion over. So this this does allow the, the process to continue, but it doesn't end that discussion. Thanks. With that, I would move staff's recommendation and adopt the findings that were read to us earlier. I'll second. Motion to amend and seconded. No further comments or discussion. I'll call for the vote. Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Next item, please. Okay, number two, 2009 Transit 5307 Program of Project. And staff report. Yes, the next recommendation for the council is the council conducts a public hearing and approves the federal fiscal year 2010 program of projects using federal section 5307 funds. Uh, transit services in the city of Galt, South Sacramento County are currently provided under a joint city-county agreement uh, for South County Transit, SCT Link. For this agreement, Sacramento County is the lead agency. In addition to state funds, we also receive federal funding under Section 5307 of, for urban areas and 5311 rural areas based on the Transportation Equity Act. These funds are administered by the, the federal, transportation, federal Transit Agency. They can be used for planning, design, acquisition, and construction of transit-related operational facilities, as well as operations and maintenance and capital projects such as buses and bus shelters. As of the last census, Galt was combined with Lodi as part of a combined urbanized area. That means we share the grant with Lodi. Lodi is the grantee. We are a sub-recipient uh, to their grant, and they process the grants for us. Lodi, Galt, Sacramento County, SJ Cog, and SACOG have a joint memo of understanding as to how we're going to administer the grant programs, who's the lead agency for the grant, who applies for fundings. And we, within that, we have an approved split or target split based upon an approved program of projects for our federal funding. In addition, this year to regular 5307 funding, we did receive a large uh, allocation of the ARA, American Recovery and Reinvestment Act money. It's also been processed through FTA 5307 funds. Your agenda report includes the proposed program of projects. Uh, typically, this just includes operation and maintenance facilities for South County Transit. Uh, but because of the ARA funds, it was expanded for this year. We actually have two different shares for operations. This is part regular funding and part of the ARA funding. Um, so a total of $378,000. We also have a special category of preventative maintenance from the ARA funding of about $156,000. Uh, in terms of capital, we have about $231,000 in capital funding in the program. That's to purchase two buses, uh, four bus shelters, and a preliminary engineering work for a transit O&M facility here in Galt for $50,000. The total proposed program of projects is $759,467. Um, there is no direct fiscal impact from approving this tonight. All of these funds and the projects have been incorporated into the approved budget. Uh, FTA regulations require that we do have a public hearing prior to the adoption of this program of projects. I conclude my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? If not, I'll open the public hearing. Any members from the public wishing to speak on this? None? We'll close the public hearing. No further questions or comments. I'll like to ask for a motion. Ask a question. Question? Sure. The, the two buses, are they the standard size that we're accustomed to? Or Yes, the same, the same two. And are they purchased through a joint contract anywhere, or is it just a straight? 
it's through the state bid list on the preferred provider that right same as we purchased two last year the same two okay with that i'll move staff's recommendation second motion has been made and seconded no further discussion call for the vote aye 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 thank you regular calendar city council we have one item solar financing program advertising campaign it's real brief just uh like we talked about at the last meeting, I would like staff to prepare our, our next newsletter for a headline article that will be touting the implementation of this program. I'd also like to ask council to allow our city clerk's department to put out a press release at the first of the year that talks about the generalized nature of the program, doesn't get into specific details about how the financing is achieved because that's all not completely worked out. Get that out there so we can create a waiting list of homeowners that once funding becomes available, are ready to implement the program. And I'd also like to ask if we can establish a contact link on our city website that is directed to whoever in our staff would be the responsible party once this program is implemented. Yeah. For clarification on the newsletter, are you talking about the April newsletter, the March, April newsletter, the one that's going out? No, not the one that's going out right now. Andrew, did you have a chance to talk with Maisie at Valley Vision, or did she contact you by any chance? No, she didn't. Okay, I'll get your number, because she's really wanting to keep track of the progress of this. So. Okay, yeah. At the, I don't think you were at the meeting when we actually discussed this program, but right. it looks like Galt, as well as every other city in Sacramento County, is going to be a pilot yeah. part of this program. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's part of what she's overseeing. So. Right. Council okay with that? Yeah. Right, I got that you mentioned it. And good. Okay. Uh, communications? Are there any other communications? I, I did want to bring up something under communications. I know the mayor and I had a meeting scheduled with uh, Assemblymember Joan Buchanan. And it's canceled. And she's right. canceled. And then they I'm very disappointed that this, this meeting's been canceled. That's the second one. She, she <laughs> rescheduled <laughs> and she canceled, yeah, yeah. canceled again. Uh, there's a date I think Jason had. I'm sorry. They were going to get back to us about some dates on that for the first year, but we don't oh. have a new date yet. Oh, okay. I, I'm really disappointed about this. I was uh, somebody that supported Assemblywoman Buchanan when she ran for office. She's made no attempt in the last year and a half to come down to the city of Galt and hold any type of function. Mm -hmm. She's had a staff member, I think, come to one of our council meetings, and we've we've been trying to set up a firm date to meet with her and we just it's been impossible to do it. So I'd like to ask council to relay the message to Assemblymember Buchanan that we, we need a meeting with our elected representative at the state because we have issues that are important to the residents of the city of Galt that need sure. to be addressed. Yeah. Thank you. The message is delivered loud and clear. Right. Okay. We'll adjourn to Redevelopment Agency. Roll call, please. Board Members Haynes. Here. Haynes. Did you say Haynes? Haynes. Haynes. You guys all out of whack, don't you? That's all right, Haynes. Um, Haynes. Claire? Yes, I'm Haynes. here. Haynes. Here. Meredith? Here. Felton? Here. Let's have an old one. Uh, public comment? Just don't call me. None. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, no. Information consent agenda. We have uh, three items. If you would read those, please. Yes, number one, the um, approval of the minutes of the meeting of December 1st, 2009. Number two, approval of the redevelopment agency warrants. And number three, approval of or, uh, an amendment to the facade improvement program. Okay, any questions or comments? If not, I'll ask for a motion. Move to approve. Second. If approved and seconded, no further comments. Call for the vote. Aye. 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 Oh. Now we will uh, adjourn and reconvene to the Galt City Council City Clerk's Report. Thank you. Just a few reminders. Um, there's a beautification committee meeting at 3:30 on Thursday, December 17th, in the City Hall Community Room. Um, the Commission on Aging meeting that was scheduled for December 24th is canceled. Um, city offices will be closed on December 24th, December 25th, and January 1st for the holidays. There will be a City Council Youth Committee meeting on January 4th in the City Hall Community Room at 6 o'clock. And that takes us to our next Council meeting. Okay.
Thank you. Thank you. Comments by staff, Jason? We do have a couple, and I'm actually going to ask Greg to deliver the message. There's <laughs> two bits of really good news that I want, we want to share with the council as well as the community. One is on the revolving fund loan, and the other one is on the central golf interchange. And Greg has been instrumental in getting both of those a lot of every day on the phone, making sure that it's being pushed and harassing and nagging. And I think people finally relented and gave us the approval. So I appreciate his efforts. So Greg, why don't you go ahead and let everybody know? I'll take credit for the nagging in the first one. <laughs> uh, the good news is, yes, last Friday, I believe we found out from the state we got our loan commitment for $16.6 .6 million to fund the wastewater treatment plant upgrade at 2.5% over the 20-year period. Uh, I think I showed you, Council, before the permit application was about that high. We finally got through it all. A lot of credit goes to myself. I nagged quite a bit toward the end. My staff, Inez and her staff, were instrumental in helping us push through the credit report. We're actually approved for $22.5 million. So our credit is real good with the state. That part's good. And also West Joe, so we did a tremendous amount of, of happening. We also had a state employee stay eight days into his vacation to make sure our grant got processed. He wouldn't leave on his vacation until we got our part done. So Wing Lee did a great job for us as well. The second information has to do with the Central Interchange. Congressman Lungan was successful in getting $500,000 earmark over the hurdle into the final bill to be considered. Um, so that will come off the top of expenses for the interchange. So we keep plugging away, trying to, to save pennies here and there and get additional state and federal money where we can. And now on the wastewater treatment plant, now that we have the funding, we're going to go ahead and execute the contract if it hasn't already been done, and then the, con the contract work should start in January. The contract was at the contractor's council, pre-authorized city manager to sign that contract some two months ago in anticipation of that day. We sent the contract out to the contractor a week ahead of time. It's going to be due back today or tomorrow. We'll have Jason sign it. Contractors are already starting to get his stuff together. We'll start work on January 5th. Right. Hey, Greg. That is good news. If we had to gone through the bonding process, what would have been the cost to the city to get that money? Inez, if we had gone through the bonding process, what would the cost have been to the city? What do you think? Do you have any idea? No, I think when we, on Friday, I sent a quick uh, email out to the underwriter that we had actually um, had discussions with on financing. And, and even though the market, I think we were listing right around four. But, but then we're looking at cost of issuance on top of that and so forth. So um, I think we used 500000 in our, in our a half million dollars. We did so. Yeah. Right. On top so of that, line of, that line of credit really was God sent. You did good on that. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any other staff comments? None? Uh, comments by council members or any future agenda items? Uh, Vice Mayor Payne? Uh, I attended the Sacramento Transportation Board meeting last week, and I wanted, again, Greg Halliday, this is your night. <laughs> I wanted to commend him on the presentation that he made to the board, which uh, encouraged them to, again, approve our request for uh, money for the interchange. I was very proud of the report that was given, and thank you very much. In addition to that, uh, we had a financial report audit and this will be available if anyone is interested in taking a look at it. Um, the Sacramento Transportation Authority um, oversees the spending of the Measure A tax, gasoline tax money. Uh, just some highlights from the report. The actual Measure A revenue was short of projections by over $9 million. Uh, sales tax was about 3.9 percent less than what we had we had pro projected and had hoped for. Uh, the good news is we had uh, borrowed money so that we could move forward on some of the projects at the front end, and uh, those are stable. The financial institutions that financed those um, were stable. Therefore, there were no foreclosures. Had there been foreclosures, we would have had to find the money immediately to cover that. So that's the good news. The bad news is the uh, reduction in the revenue that came in. Um, the other thing that I would like to take this opportunity is to thank uh, the commissions like the um, Commission on Aging, the Planning Commission, uh, Parks and Recs at this time for all the work they've done for the past year. 
uh, they come to meetings and they don't get uh, recognized very often. So at this time, I'd like to thank, thank them for the work they've done over the past year and wish everybody a Merry Christmas and hopefully we'll have a Happy New Year. Council Member Clare. A couple of things. Uh, continued working on the train programs we've mentioned in the, the strategic committee for that group is going to continue having fairly regular meetings because we're getting some good progress as reported to you before with the High Speed Rail Commission and the other work we're doing. So I'll keep you updated on that. Um, to the news we got, um, congratulations also to Pete Evich and his coordination for us back in Washington, D.C. Uh, I spoke to him last week, and with that fresh on our minds, I'd like to ask Council if we could agendize soon, uh, begin putting together our congressional requests for the 2010. Um, I'll be back in Washington, D.C. in right now, January, February, and March uh, for my work, not on city's money. But while I'm back there as before, those are the three months that tend to be most critical to get our appropriation in. And again, if council wants me to kind of lead that, I'll set up a meeting with the mayor and myself to meet with Congressman Lundgren and his staff here in the district first. So we've got everything in line and back to the D.C. office in time for the cut. So um, if, if that's something you want to talk about, I would say we should probably talk about in the next meeting or two. Or next meeting. Okay. Um, also at SACOG, um, we continue to have some successes moving the transportation dollars into the region. Um, we got funding approval to relocate the tracks at the rail yard. That's the key to begin an intermodal site that'll be at the uh, downtown, what, what I now call the Amtrak station there. That'll be for Amtrak and the light rail and the buses. And if we get our commuter service, everything will hub in that one location. And the linchpin was the track relocation that's needed. So that, that's got a, a, a good funding source now to start moving forward. So those are the main ones. And I also would join Councilman Payne and wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a safe New Year. And uh, hope the, whatever the family you have near and far that you can have time with them. I know in my case I have a son away at college. and. It's one of the times in the year we get to get him home from college and get to see him, and I'm sure many people have the same thing. So best all of you. Thank you, Councilmember Haynes. Uh, I want to start out. I want to say that Parks and Rec did an excellent job on this year's uh, parade. It was outstanding. Um, I think we had a really good turnout. I think that's the most citizens I've seen out. What do you think, Randy? Uh, in a long time. It was a great night for it. Uh, it went real well and smooth. Your staff did a great job. I know they helped me out a lot. So I was very grateful. It did an outstanding job. Um, outside of that, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and uh, look forward to seeing you next year. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Erida. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to echo Council Member Hain. Uh Thank you to our Parks and Rec Department for the help that they they contributed to the, the parade. I also wanted to thank Patrice and all of the volunteers that were working there, helping out with the parade as well. A couple things I wanted to bring up. I talked a few meetings ago about a power purchase agreement that SMUD had uh, initiated with Solar Power Inc. to do 18,000 solar panels out on the Aerojet property. I've been, I've been looking into the power purchase agreements a little bit more. And I'm thinking that it would be a good idea for the City of Galt to sit down and talk to Solar Power Inc. about possibly doing a power purchase agreement to do solar arrays on our police officers' uh, parking structure. Yeah. Is that something you think we could do? We actually good? already had some conversations with them. And actually part of our, um, we're submitting a grant application for the Energy Efficiency Black Grant Program. And part of that grant application would be to install solar panels at the police department. Okay. So we're hopeful that we can get grant funding for that, in which case we wouldn't have to have a power purchase agreement. We'd have it ourselves. Right. Um, but there may be other opportunities in the city to do. And we had, I actually had a meeting with SMUD a couple months ago about doing something potentially out of the wastewater treatment plant and some other things. And what we were told was none of our, the, the, the power purchase agreements were all on much larger sites. In order to make it work financially, typically they'd look for, and I can't remember all the numbers right now, 
but none of the sites we had in the city were desirable. They actually had, I don't know if it was the same solar company, but SMUD talked to a couple of them to find out if there were any potential sites in Galt that they would be interested in working with the city on. And what they came back with was not really. Um, now we can continue to have some conversations, but that was the initial response that we received back from some of the players. I know that uh, Solar Power Inc. I think was also awarded the SMUD PPAs at all of the Costco stores in Sacramento County. Those seem like they would be comparable to a site that we could come up with at the wastewater treatment plant. So if you can schedule a meeting with Solar Power Inc. through SMUD, I'd like to sit in with you and talk about anything that they could offer the city of Galt. Also, the Walmart EIR, very, very big. This just came out recently. Uh, everyone, I think, can actually access this document via our website. Is that right, yes, Kurt? That's correct. Okay. It's on the uh, it's on the home page, and it's also on the planning department. What's the timeline that we're looking at right now for the uh, the Walmart EIR? We have a public meeting uh, with the planning commission on January 14th, and the public review period, I believe, ends January 28th. Okay. Something that stuck out to me just reading through it, and I don't want to get into all the details tonight, but the, the traffic circulation plan, when it talks about the roundabouts as a mitigation measure, were there any rough drafts of this traffic study that were done before we actually adopted an intent to move forward with the roundabouts? I'm not following you. Well, they're actually using in the EIR the roundabouts as a mitigation measure for this project. Correct. And what I'm trying to find out is was the conversation about the roundabouts initiated because the traffic proved so bad through an initial rough draft of this EIR, or was it just something that we did separate? I think that was done independently um, as a result of, I guess, the money that the state was investing in that intersection. I don't know, Greg, you want to shed some light on that? The discussion of a different project was initiated when we found out that the state was going to spend $1.4 million of projects that would not improve the intersection capacity right. uh, and then was not taking care of the city's needs that we had a small $220,000 CIP project to improve capacity onto the freeway. That's what initiated the discussions about, okay, what else could we do with this project? Separate from that, the roundabout idea came out as a possible out-of-the-box uh, way of uh, accommodating another project that was something between all and nothing. But the discussion about a, another project was, I think, pre predated the roundabouts. So there's a line in here where it says, however, if the 2009 TCIP is not adopted prior to the building permit issuance, the applicant, which would be Walmart, would be responsible for the construction of the roundabout improvements. Correct. So they'd have to pay for them themselves. Correct. Well, if, the, if that were the case, I would suspect they wouldn't be moving forward. You're probably right. Uh, other than that, I'd just like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, have a safe and Happy New Year. And again, for those of you in the community that, that have the ability to give to those that are less fortunate, please take the opportunity to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I just want to thank everyone for being here tonight, working together. It must be the, the Christmas spirit. But uh, And I want to thank council members. This is one of the best meetings that I feel personally that we've had. I want to thank you for that. Just uh, as a personal note, I want to uh, wish everyone happy holidays, and from my family to yours, uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. We won't have a next meeting until after New Year. So uh, we will reconvene back to closed session. We have a couple of items still, and we will come back and make a report. What do we do for fun? Look at that. Okay. Seven and forty-nine. Seven. about HDR's contract for the water Yeah, I don't get it. Unexpected. This is the one I told you in the last staff meeting. We had three different contracts. We tried to carry them all three versions of the contract.
their and attorney and comments. Well, your comments. Uh, uh, I was okay. Here's your hard copy. My office is an email. So you can see what they're all going to take care of the insurance that I and the main recipient. They're asking for changes in their communication. They're upset that they can't, they can't identify us for the third party of office. So if you get a chance. Yeah, no. you, get, you, have the, you have the email so you'll be able to see the colors. Okay. I just thought this is here. I'll give you a hard copy. Okay. The uh the first of the two